So I started stand-up comedy about seven and a half, almost eight years ago, um, which was just a great way to tell penis jokes to strangers. And, um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I kind, of, uh, you know, I kind of go back and forth with theater, but stand-up is sort of a lot, uh, is more of a daily thing. I do it like four or five times a week. You so. can drink on the job and stand-up, yeah, which you can't plus. do in theater, which is nice. But a lot of people, they, wear, they come with the jerseys, so you see right, a lot right, of like... Right. It's, uh, it's pretty cool what, to see a Broadway show where you see the women like, uh, and the guy's like, hey, you know, so that's a, uh, you see that a lot. And there's some, there's some serious, like, Wisconsin fans. You see guys, this guy showed the other day in the front row, he had a helmet. And he was just like this the whole time. I'm like, is he going to throw it at somebody? I had no idea. Is he going, I was like, oh, he's going to have a sign it after the show. And he just left with his helmet after the show. He just wanted to have a helmet. While he watched the show, I guess. So that's kind of a new demographic for a Broadway audience, yeah, I would say. I mean, it's incredible cast. How was it working with them? And how was it kind of getting to that point with the... Well, I play a guy named Paul Horning. Um, and obviously, this is a Broadway crowd. So you all know who Paul Horning is, right? Yeah. Of course we do. Clearly. He, he played f for uh, a, a team called the Green Bay Packers. They're in the National Football League. And he, uh, he was... A, actually, he was a very... He was kind of a famous personality too he was a he's a very famous drinker smoker he's a marlboro man he was a gambler he was a womanizer but i would never i would never gamble <laughs> the play the relationship between dan Loria, vince lombardi and marie lombardi um it's it's really incredible every night to hear that and watch that and i guess the one thing that i realized that fit me with uh i just kind of like pushing my own boundaries and other people's boundaries and i like i like ex exploring my own sense of what scares me and what scares people so in the audience so i was just a very kind of aggressive uh physically and aggressive kind of emotionally actor and that um you know that compensated for a lack of talent for years and hopefully <laughs> hopefully my technique has sort of merged a little bit with my talent over you know doing it for 10 years but uh but yeah so oh, like I, I never feel comfortable enough with the craft of comedy that i can just go anywhere and be funny like, there's always a little bit of fear and trepidation about, like, these people are going to hate me. And I think a lot of times before I go on stage, I'm always, I'm always worried about just the degree to which people will hate me or how many people in the audience are not going to like me. So it's definitely, that's an exciting thing about anything where you never feel like you've mastered it. You always feel like you're working on it. But the first time is the worst time. And there's that very famous, I, I don't know, I'm going to screw up the story for some of you guys who are real hardcore theater people, but you know the story where... There was some famous play, and the, the, the actress is like, I, why, why am I not getting laughed when I, when I ask for the salt? It's like, well, and the director's like, well, because you're asking for the laugh. Well, what did I do last week? You were asking for the salt. So I think in theater, you ask for the salt. You know what I mean? You, uh, you always try to play the truth of the moment and the sincerity of the moment, and if it's directed well and if it's written well, that's all you have to do. And if the laugh is there, you'll get it. So forcing the laugh in theater, which if you've seen Lombardia, I'd do it, but um, you, <laughs> you, you shouldn't. And in and, and comedy, you can. And there are tricks to force a laugh and force applause breaks and to force bigger reactions than the joke necessarily merits. But for, for, for theater, if you just say the line and you play the intention, you know, the objectives of your line, if it's well written and directed well, you'll get the laugh. I do this joke about, uh, I go, yeah, my, my girl, uh, she's lived with me for three years. It's an interesting story how she moved in. I'll just do a quick, uh, you know, pantomime how she moved in. Me, me, me. What's wrong? Me, me, me. Oh, you lost the lease on your place? Honestly, maybe you can stay with me for a couple of weeks until you get things sorted out. And then I, like, <laughs> and then I like fall. And then I fall on my back, you know. So, uh, yeah, so when she's... So when, and it's actually funny. I did, a show, I did that at the John... Uh, I opened for John Lovis, I did it for him, and then, and then we went to a deli, and he was there and goes, do you see what your boyfriend's doing about you, huh? You like that joke? She was like, huh? No, I think about it. No, I don't like that joke. So, yeah. Huh, I'm just kidding. I met someone else who I lived with for three years. Uh, no, seriously, you should see Lombardi, not because of me, but because of Judith Light and Dana Loria, and uh, Tommy Kale, who directed In the Heights. I think he's probably the best director I've ever worked with. And Eric Simonson's incredible playwright, and uh, you know it's produced by two people, Frank Kermzer and Tony Pantoro, and they, you know, I think it's just a really well-intended play. You can bring a family, you can bring your friends. It's, you know, if you're looking for a gift for your dad, there's a good chance it's a perfect gift for your dad. Um, 
I think it's just a really kind of beautiful, beautiful play. And you know, I have a small part in it, but some of the people are, you know, Judith is they're you know they're going to throw Tonys at her for this role, and um, and it's yeah, I think it's a beautiful show, and it's only 90 minutes, so you can get the hell out of there too, which is another <laughs> plus. Um, but yeah, my website, I, I go if you go to laughfactory.com, I write a blog there uh, detailing my ridiculous life, my silly experiences.